It is important that we find out what happened to Jelani. Jelani could have been anybody's son. He could have been anybody's brother. He could have been anybody's nephew. Your cousin, but he was my son, and I want to know what happened to Jelani. So I need the state's attorney to do what he needs to do to get the FBI involved and find out what happened to my son. Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for joining me. I'm your host, Sherry. I may sound a little weird today. I'm getting over something. I don't know what it is. I I don't believe it's COVID because I've had, you know, multiple tests and they've all come back negative, but I definitely have something going on this week and I just don't know what it is, but I'm just about over it. I'm on the tail end of it. And I just, I, in my opinion, I just feel like I sound a little different than normal. Today, we're going to talk about a young man who had a whole lot going on for him. He was a student at Illinois State University, and he was working to become a doctor. He was a good person and had a heart of gold and touched a lot of lives. He disappeared in August of 2021. He would eventually be found, but it was not the outcome everyone hoped for, and his parents and the rest of his family and friends need answers. Before I get started, you guys know, unlike a lot of other podcasts, that I hate banter, and I always just jump right into the story, but I want to take a moment to thank each of you for listening. When I started this channel back in 2020, I only really wanted to get Ollie Herbert's story out there, and I didn't really have any real interest in continuing, but people seemed to like me. I remember being in school and my teacher told me I had a voice for radio, not a singing voice, but a good narrating voice, and that inspired me to want to be a radio host. I never pursued it though, but this is just as good or better. You may notice that we have a new name. I was inspired by the 80s TV show Tales from the Dark Side, except these aren't fictional stories. I was going to call it Crime from the Dark Side, but not all of my shows are about crime. If you've been with me a while, you know I cover a variety of topics. My original name, Sherry Lynn Podcast, was dreamt up in about 30 seconds, and I just wanted something a little more catchy. So again, thank you all so, so much for listening, and let's dive right in. As always, my sources are listed in the description area of the video. This is the case of Jelani Day. 2021 was the second year of the pandemic. Joe Biden is president. The Summer Olympics were held in Tokyo, Japan after being postponed in 2020 due to the pandemic, and no spectators were allowed due to COVID-19 restrictions. Broadway reopened for the first time in 18 months, but you had to show proof of vaccination in order to attend. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin was found guilty of second-degree unintentional murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter in the death of George Floyd. And lastly, the NASA rover Perseverance landed on Mars after seven months of traveling through space. Jelani Day went missing in late August 2021. A big problem here is that around this same time, Gabby Petito was missing and the media was focused on her case. It was almost like there was no other missing people in the world at that time. I've never seen the media give so much attention to one missing person. And rest in peace to Gabby. That was not the outcome everyone was hoping for either. For many Black folks, especially Black men, their disappearances go overlooked. Men in general are not nearly as talked about when they go missing. I've covered quite a few disappearances of men, and normally there's not a lot of outrage when a man of any race goes missing, and I hope we can change that soon. Jelani Day was a bright doctoral student who attended Illinois State University. He is the fourth out of five children. He was working on his master's degree in speech pathology. He was smart, kind, happy, and had big dreams. This guy wanted his PhD, and that's just what he was going to do. He wanted to be a speech pathologist and work so hard to get to where he was in life at the time. The reason he ever wanted to become a speech pathologist is because when he was a kid, he had a friend with a speech impediment, and the friend was bullied a lot. He made a a promise to this friend that he would grow up and become a doctor who specialized in speech. Jelani is athletic. He's a great swimmer who competed on the school swim team, and he also ran track. He was a member of a fraternity. In his senior year of high school, Jelani was voted best personality. 
On August 24, 2021, at 7.20 a.m., Jelani is spotted on camera at the ISU's Bone Student Center. He was wearing dress pants, dress shoes, a blue button-down shirt, and a blue disposable COVID mask. Jelani used his credit card at the Starbucks in the Student Center that morning. At 9.15 a.m., Jelani is seen on camera entering a cannabis dispensary. He is wearing shorts, a baseball hat, and a Jimi Hendrix shirt. This is the last confirmed sighting of Jelani. The dress clothes he was wearing earlier were found in his apartment, so he went home and changed into the casual clothes before going to the dispensary. The next day, Jelani's mother reports him missing to police. She said she hadn't been able to get a hold of him, and he didn't attend his class, and his calls are going straight to voicemail. I can tell you as a parent, I can't remember a single time when I called my son's phone and it went straight to voicemail. I've called and it it rang and it rang and he didn't answer, but never straight to voicemail. These young people do not let their phones die, I promise you. They are cognizant at all times of the battery life. If I called my son's phone and it went straight to voicemail, I would immediately feel anxious like something was very wrong. Carmen felt this vibe and she knew that something was off. Now, you know how these missing adult things go. Jelani's mom, Carmen, she basically walks into the police station. An officer gets out a pen and paper and takes down the details. Knowing that he's not a minor, it's unlikely that Jelani being missing would be treated as urgent and instead would be considered low priority. Usually just a be on the lookout is issued for the car. The detective tells her in not so many words that in order for them to make his case a high priority, she would have to say that there is a cause for concern. In other words, they are pressuring her to say that her son is suicidal. So Carmen decides she's going to say whatever she needs to say to get this moving along. She says she was afraid her son would harm himself. She 100% believes her son is not suicidal, though. Carmen says he wasn't depressed. He didn't have any kind of pressures that would make him want to escape from life. But if I have to tell you what you want to hear in order for you to do your job, then that's just what I'll do. And I don't blame her at all. I would do whatever I needed to do, too. One of Jelani's professors reported him missing as well because it was so unlike him not to show up for class. That says a lot about Jelani and the kind of person he was. But I also feel like the professor jumped the gun a little bit. Maybe she knew something that we don't and shared it with police. We can't speculate on that, though. I just thought it was a little weird. Instead of just marking him absent, she called the police. Missing person flyers are distributed and hung around the university. Word is spreading that Jelani is missing. But the next day, a big discovery was made, and it wasn't anywhere near the university. And that was the discovery of Jelani's car. Jelani had this nice, bright white Chrysler 300. The car belonged to his grandfather, and when he passed away, Jelani inherited the car. It's large and it's flashy. Jelani's car is found 63 miles north of the university in the city of Peru, Illinois. His family says this area of the state was completely foreign to him and he had no connection to it whatsoever. It was found in the woods and police describe it as being concealed. I don't know exactly what they mean by concealed. I assume off the road and hidden and it and it may be that, but it could also mean that it was covered by a covering of some sort. I did read, but it's not verified, that the car was covered in bushes and a and tree branches. I don't want to speculate with that scenario, though, if we don't know for sure, but the car was found concealed in the woods. I saw photos of where the car was found, and it's pretty secluded, and it's down a tiny path that looks like it isn't wide enough to even drive a car down. A photo of the exact model and of and color of Jelani's car is on your screen. Imagine how hard it is to hide that particular car. Inside the car were the clothes he was last seen wearing, the hat and Jimi Hendrix shirt. Even stranger, the license plates were removed from the car. I read a piece where a woman who lives in the area and has lived there for 30 years said that she's never known any car to go in the area where Jelani's car was found. 
She said it's not an area that cars are supposed to even be in. It's more of a walking path, and an out-of-towner would have a lot of trouble finding it. At this point, there are drones and canine searches and lots of volunteers. Jelani's family is still holding out hope and saying he needs to come home so he can continue his journey to becoming Dr. Jelani Day. On September 2nd, this is about six days after Jelani's car was found, they find Jelani's wallet and also his Illinois State University lanyard. It was found on a street in LaSalle, Illinois, which is around five miles from where Jelani's car was found. Remember, his car was found 63 miles from his university and marijuana dispensary where he was last seen at. Twelve days after Jelani was reported missing, Someone calls in and says there is a body floating in the Illinois River. This is one mile from where Jelani's car was found. I've told you in previous cases, if a body goes into the water, it takes about 10 days to float to the top. They can't assume it's Jelani's body and they need a positive identification. The state police collect DNA from Jelani's mom and dad and have to send it off to a lab to see if it's a match to the body's DNA. Plus, an autopsy has to be conducted on this body to see what the cause of death was. The whole process is going to take weeks due to the backlog at the county forensic lab. They can't move this body to the front of the line because that wouldn't be fair. There's evidence and rape kits and so on from other cases that are waiting to be processed, and they have to get through those first. I can't imagine what this family felt like during those weeks of uncertainty. I do need to point out, though, that the Illinois State Police Chief Public Information Officer says that this is not true. There was no backlog, but she also didn't give a reason for why it is taking so long. Do you remember when Gabby Petito's body was found and the media announced it and it wasn't yet 100% identified? That's because her body wasn't in a body of water and making things unidentifiable. She probably looked a lot like she did when she was alive. You could see her blonde hair and the clothes she was wearing. So they could tell the family and the press that they found a body resembling Gabby. Social media users are outraged about this, though, because her body was formally identified in two days and Jelani's took 19 days. You may think to yourself, well, why can't they tell the family that the body is a young black male who resembles Jelani so that they can be prepared? The answer is no, and that's because the body was described as being unrecognizable after almost two weeks in the water. Water is basically the worst thing that can happen to a corpse. It speeds up decomposition like 100 times faster. I read about the condition the body was in when it was found, and it was exactly what you would picture a body to look like after 12 days in the water, being disturbed by fish, turtles, and other water animals. Jelani's mother asked to see his body, but was strongly advised against it for this reason. On September 23, 2021, Police announced the body found in the Illinois River was Jelani Day. The positive identification was made using forensic dental identification, which took four different dental practices to confirm, and also through DNA testing. It was announced during the only press conference ever conducted in the case. Carmen says there are no words to clearly communicate our devastation. Our hearts are broken. The toxicology report is released publicly and will tell us what was found in Jelani's body. He was found to have caffeine, nicotine, and marijuana, all substances that are legal. In Illinois, marijuana is recreational and anyone over the age of 21 can possess it. The medical examiner who conducted the autopsy says the cause of death was drowning. There were no other signs of a struggle or trauma before his death. He went into that water alive, which is baffling since he was such a good swimmer and part of the swim team. The coroner stated the following. There was no evidence of any pre-death injury such as manual strangulation, an assault or altercation, sharp, blunt, or gunshot injury, infection, tumor, natural disease, congenital abnormality, or significant drug intoxication. The manner in which Mr. Day went into the Illinois River is currently unknown. 
So this beautiful mural of Jelani that an artist painted is put up in town and was quickly removed. There ends up being a protest march about the removal of the mural. It's been speculated by police and many others that this was a suicide. Jelani's family strongly disagrees with this theory. His parents say Jelani had a very strong mind and was not emotionally fragile, and he handled anything that life threw at him very well. I don't feel that his family is in denial. I think they've looked at everything and determined there's no way that he could have done this, and I don't feel like they are out of line at all. When you read about this case, you will read people's outrage that some of Jelani's organs were missing. If you remember back to the Kendrick Johnson case, his organs were missing, but that was due to the funeral home practice of using newspaper as a stuffing and was 100% legal. It's an outdated practice, but it's still legal, as messed up as it is. Jelani's family wanted to clear this up because they don't want to distract from the real evidence. They said, no, Jelani's organs are not missing. What happened is that his body was in 77 degree water for 12 days. It's going to have natural decomposition. I told you earlier, water is the worst thing to happen to a dead body. So in the autopsy report where it states he has no brain, no eyes, and no liver or spleen, it was because the organs were liquefied not because someone removed them. It also states his genitalia was severely damaged, and this was from the animals in the water. It's really awful that his mother has to clear that kind of graphic stuff up with the media. She shouldn't have to think about that kind of stuff. It's also rumored that his jawbone was sawed out. A reporter sent an email to the LaSalle County coroner asking about this, and the coroner replied, yes, his jawbone was sawed out after the body was found. The reason for this is to make dental identification. Remember, I told you that it took four different dental practices to identify his teeth. That's because many of his teeth were missing due to the decomposition in the water. Jelani's funeral takes place and is attended by the famous Reverend Jesse Jackson, Carmen tells the crowd, the journey does not stop here. I'm only getting ready to lay Jelani to rest, but I can't rest because I don't know what happened to him. Carmen wants people to give the same amount of attention they're giving to Gabby Petito to her son. Imagine for a moment that your child passed away under mysterious circumstances and you are scared, frightened, and anxious, but all you see are reports of this other person who the media deems more important than your son. Carmen offers $25,000 to anyone who can tell her exactly what happened to her son. Jelani's fraternity offers $15,000 as well. As a side note, I watched some of Jelani's service online and saw his casket being carried, and it was truly heartbreaking, and it makes me realize just how real this is for his family. I lost my son too, but I know what happened to him. If I didn't know, I wouldn't be able to get through my days that are already hard enough as it is. So there is this man who is driving down an interstate in Illinois. He's hauling a mattress in the bed of his truck. Well, the mattress comes off the truck or shifts in some way, but the man has to pull over and strap it back in. While on the side of the highway, he spots a phone laying there. So he picks it up and it's shattered, but it's a nice new phone. So this man takes it to Walmart and is given $80 for it. I didn't even know that you could trade in broken phones at Walmart, but okay. A few days later, the man is contacted by police and they're like, hey, you know that phone you sold to Walmart a couple days ago? Well, that belongs to Jelani Day, who disappeared under mysterious circumstances and is now dead. Do you want to explain yourself here? The man tells police about the mattress and finding it on the side of the highway on I-74. He is not considered a suspect at this point. Jelani's parents, meanwhile, know nothing about this. Carmen found out through a Facebook post of a man who was friends with the man who found the phone. She contacts police and says, why didn't you tell me my son's phone was found? They tell her because they wanted to make 100% sure it was his phone before they tell her. 
She requests that the phone be turned over to the FBI for an analysis. In fact, the family wants the FBI to take over the whole case completely, and you heard that in the very beginning of this podcast. I haven't heard too much more about his phone, but it was given to the FBI in November, and that's only two months ago. Perhaps something will come out of it, like his locations and his last phone calls and text messages. When a young person goes missing, the first thing they want to find besides the person is their phone. Usually everything about their life is in that phone. Let's talk about his clothes. When Jelani was pulled out of the water, he was wearing a black tank top, undershirt, underwear, and a sweatshirt tied around his waist. His Jimi Hendrix shirt was found in his car. The sweatshirt tied around his waist makes no sense to me. Why would he or someone else do that? Also, I checked the weather for, that, for the area that day in August, and it was 88 degrees. His lower body clothes were found on the riverbank. Jelani's family hires attorney Ben Crump. You are probably familiar with him. He is a civil rights attorney you know from the Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, George Floyd, and the Flint Water cases. He is also the attorney for the families of Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, Jacob Blake, and Dante Wright. Just saying all of those names makes me emotional. Rest in peace to each of them. He is referred to as Black America's Attorney General, and this guy is good. Attorney Ben Crump demands that the FBI take full control over the case of Jelani Day. The police department wasn't doing enough and just considers it a suicide or an accidental drowning. He was joined by Jelani's mother and Reverend Jesse Jackson, and he says, As we approach 100 days without any answers, we are demanding that the FBI investigate this matter as a hate crime. The family is losing confidence in the local authorities. They want answers. Jelani's case has received significantly less attention, revealing a deep concerning disparity in the way missing person cases are treated and covered for people of color. He went on to say, a young black man who was beating all the statistics, all the odds, pursuing a PhD, and then one day they tell you he was found naked in a river, this doesn't add up. Let's get into some of the theories. With the accidental drowning theory, let's say Jelani decided one day I'm going to cut class, which I've never done before, but I'm going to go swimming alone in the Illinois River 60 miles away in a town I've never been to. But before that, I'm going to drive down the highway and throw my new phone out the window. You guys see how ridiculous this sounds. I don't even need to continue. Let's say it was suicide. Why would he need to go to the dispensary beforehand? Most people who commit suicide don't need to stop and pick up their weed right before. Why get rid of his stuff along the road? Why tie a sweatshirt around his waist before jumping in the water and hide his car and remove the plates? Most importantly, Jelani wasn't depressed. He was doing great in life and he had no reason to want to end his life. Also, do you know of any suicide cases where instead of jumping off a bridge, they just wade out into the water? That would have had to be one of the hardest, longest ways to commit suicide ever. Also, how many suicide cases are there where the person makes it so complicated for their family to piece together exactly what happened? Carmen says the suicide theory is disrespectful and lazy. The next theory is a hate crime or random act of violence. The town where Jelani's car was found was 99.4% white. In my opinion, this is what happened to him. He could have been carjacked and attacked, but it's hard because there were no indications on his body that he was attacked, and you and I both know Jelani would have fought back. He was in great shape, and he was an athlete. Unless he he's being held at gunpoint, I would think Jelani would be able to overpower most average men. I don't know how he ended up in that water or who, or who put him there. I thought maybe he was drugged and then thrown into the water, but the toxicology report showed only caffeine, nicotine, and cannabis. Many believe this is a hate crime and that Jelani was lynched by a group of white men just because he was black. One strong point that I really need to tell you guys to back up the fact that Jelani didn't do this to himself in case you had any doubts, and that is Jelani's dad is sick with cancer. 
and he is in need of bone marrow. Jelani was the only match, and Jelani was set to donate his bone marrow to his dad. The forensics in this case are hard, and there's not much to go on. This is why the FBI needs to be involved. They have more sophisticated equipment than the average police department. There has been a lot of social media speculation about the dispensary Jelani was in before he disappeared. The name of the dispensary is called Beyond Hello. I got a headache going down a rabbit hole on Facebook about this. Apparently, there are a few employees there who were doxxed and their phone numbers got out and people were texting them and calling. I heard one of the girls had an argument with Jelani that morning regarding scanning the app on his phone, but I don't know if it's true or not. Again, this is social media. There are people boycotting and leaving bad reviews because they were the last ones to see Jelani. You can see in the middle of your screen that Jelani is staring straight into the camera. Some think that maybe Jelani was doing this as a clue. Remember, if you ever go missing against your will, if you're in a public place, look up at every camera you can. Look up at the ceiling a lot, especially near the doors and the registers. I read that the reason why Jelani is staring straight up at the camera is because the state of Illinois requires marijuana dispensaries to have those cameras installed and you must look at it when you enter the dispensary. I don't know if it scans your face or what it does, but it's a requirement to look into the camera before your ID is scanned. There are also a lot of pissed off people because they didn't release the video of Jelani walking out of the store when the family asked for it. They finally did, but they gave it to police and not to the family. The store manager, Megan, told the family to Google the video online, which is completely disrespectful. The dispensary is basically not cooperating at all with the family. I don't know if there's footage of Jelani's car leaving the parking lot or if anyone was in the car with him, but we're all interested to find out. Beyond Hello Dispensary had to file multiple reports with the police due to threats of violence. The social media rumors and speculation are really hard to follow, but if you have an afternoon and want to read about it, just search Jelani's name on Facebook or TikTok. I do follow the Justice for Jelani Facebook page because that is ran by his family. I took to Twitter to see what some of the theories in this case are. Most people are asking and saying the same things. Why would his wallet be on some random street? Someone robbed him, took him to the river, made him strip his clothes off, and walked him to the riverbank where they murdered him. A lot of people also pointed out that Jelani was last seen in Bloomington, not where his body was located 60 miles away. He could have been brought there against his will, which is likely what happened since he missed his class, which was completely out of character. He also almost certainly wouldn't throw his phone and wallet out the window and drive to the Illinois River. There is a petition on change.org that someone started. The petition is to have the FBI take over the case. There are over 30,000 signatures so far. Even the superstar Lizzo helped get Jelani's name out there. Jelani's mom, Carmen, describes him as ambitious and driven. He was focused. He was energetic. He was full of life. Jelani was a person that you couldn't help but love. I really hope this woman is able to get the answer she needs. He deserves so much more than what happened to him. Rest in peace, Jelani Day. Thank you for wanting to provide speech services to those who need it and for all you did to help others. That's it for this week. Again, my sources are listed in the description area of the video, as well as a link to the change.org petition if you want to sign it. Take care and much love to you all.